For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We talk about the word perish. We think about stuff that's gone bad. You open up your refrigerator, you, you fill that glass with milk, you take a sip of that milk and you realize, uh-oh, I'm on the verge of making cottage cheese here. I've got old milk. And the word for old milk is perish. And you grab the container and you take it and you pour it down the sink because it's no good no more. And when we read in John 3.16, as I just have, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes it should not perish. Without Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to perish. God is going to throw you out. Now, there's a word that comes to mind. I'm not going to use it. But the Bible speaks about a literal burning hell, the lake of fire that burns forever. And you're not cast out into a garbage dump, the city dump, you're not put off into a place where rubbish is. But you're cast out into a place called hell. And when the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. And it says, Whosoever believeth. And as I turn the King James Bible to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 15, I see another word that says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And the situation comes to the fact is we got whosoever. The love of God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The love of God is Jesus Christ. God is not willing that any should perish. God is long-suffering. God says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel that they may know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, the only access to God the Father is Jesus Christ, and the invitation goes to whosoever. That is male, that is female, and if you don't know what you are, whosoever is American, Polish, African, Jewish, any race on this earth, whosoever, any sect of this world, whosoever, whether you are of Daytona Beach or you are a visitor from another place, whosoever, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the love of God is Jesus Christ. The love of God, the charity of God, is Jesus Christ. There is no other. There is no other love but the love of God through Jesus Christ. And when we read and open John 3.16, we see that I am on the wrong page. We see... For God so loved, it's past tense. John 3.16 is love past tense. L-O-V-E-D. There is no way for someone to quote to say that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That's a lie. 
I don't care who said it. Because the love of God upon the sinner is past tense in John 3.16. The love of God upon the sinner is upon a hill called Calvary. The love of God upon a sinner is called the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. That is the love of God through Jesus Christ. There is no other love but God's love, past tense, Jesus Christ, upon the suffering, upon the dying of that cross at Calvary. And the fact is, if you come to Calvary, and we try to bring you to Calvary every week. And you walk away from the gospel and say, I don't need that Jesus. I don't need that God. I don't want Jesus. I don't want God. Let me call the police and try to get rid of that God. Let me call the police and try to get rid of that preacher. I don't want it. And then, you cannot say, God loves me. You cannot walk away from Jesus Christ, not saved, not a believer, and turn around and say, God loves me. You cannot say, God bless America, when his son is rejected in the schoolroom and in the courthouse. You cannot say that God's love is upon this nation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the love of God is Jesus Christ. The continued love of God is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And the only way to continue in that love is to put your faith and trust upon Jesus. If you have never asked Jesus Christ to save your soul, if you have never trusted on Jesus Christ as your Savior, today, today, you are not in the love of God. And we'll see what John the Baptist has to say. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon, oh, I mean, upon him, but you. You in your dead and trespass against God by your acts of your sin, being as a sinner, there is no love of God. There is the condemnation of God. There is the wrath of God. John chapter 3. And when you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, there is no love of God upon you. Yes, the Bible says God is love. But there is no love when you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. Absolutely none. God loves me because I have put my faith and trust on His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the only reason why God loves me, Jesus Christ. If you do not know Jesus Christ today, God does not love you. Isn't this a great cheerful message for a Saturday morning amongst the worldly people and the saved and the unlost to hear that a preacher says that God don't love you? When the Bible says, without the Son, you are in the wrath of God. Without the Son, you are in the condemnation of God. Without your name right in the last book of life, you will go to the lake of fire, hell. Boy, that's not preached on the radio dial today. You would think, I come up here hide some eggs or something. 
a big imaginary Easter bunny or something. You would think I'd do that, but you would think that a preacher would preach about love, not that God hates me, and the love of God can continue in your life if you put your faith and trust upon Jesus Christ. You want God to love you? Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You want your preacher to love you? Put your money and your good works in the plate. That gets you loved by a preacher, but not by God. Listen, God, I'm a Baptist. I don't love you. God, look at the money I gave you. I don't love you. Well, wait a minute. Instead of me saying that, let's say what the Bible says, what Jesus said. Lord God, didn't I do this? Lord God, am I not this? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Wow. You're mean. Preacher, you're mean. Everybody's going to heaven. Really? That rotten boss is going to go to heaven with you for all eternity? <laughs> Wicked people? Good people? But there is no good people. The Bible says there is none that do it good. And the Bible says you're not good, you're not good. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. If you're not righteous, God says you're not righteous. You can lie to yourself all you want. All lies will be separated before God the judge. I'm here to tell you your religion cannot save your soul. Your church cannot save your soul. You can go to church all your entire life. Hell is full of people who go to church. I'll tell you what hell's not full with people that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. No one who has put their faith and trust on Jesus and His finished atonement of His sinless blood that is the blood of God, Acts 20, 28, goes to hell. People who think they're good go to hell. Catholics go to hell. Baptists go to hell. Episcopals go to hell. Atheists go to hell. Everybody goes to hell that has not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ because there is no love of God but the wrath of God. The wrath of God is hell. You say, preacher, I don't believe in your Jesus, but my life is great. Oh, and my family's wonderful, and I'm just getting all kinds of blessings, and I'm doing it without your God. I'm doing it without your Jesus. Wait till you fall into the wrath of God. Wait till you go into those gates of hell and those gates shut up and you can never come out of hell. And you find out what the no love of God, the unloving of God. The people that are in hell were loved by God but were no longer loved by God. You see, the love of God approximately, because I don't know, the love of God was approximately 33 AD, somewhere around there. Give or take 10 years to be safe. But the love of God is when Jesus Christ was beaten and punched and spit it upon and had his beard pulled and they had the crown of thorns upon his brow upon his head as he carried in blood sweat and tears to calvary's cross to suffer and to die for man's iniquity that is the love of god when jesus laid his hands upon that cross and took the nails in the hands and the nails in the feet as he hung upon that cross that is the love of God not being a Baptist. The love of God is Jesus dying on that cross. That's the love of God. And when you reject that finished work, when you reject the merit of God, Jesus Christ, there is no more love of God upon you. When you reject Jesus Christ, you are unloved by God. And to get that fellowship back, and to get that love back, is for you 
you to humbly bow before the Jesus on the cross and to receive him as your Savior. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And yet the Bible says every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You will stand before God. The Bible says prepare to meet thy God. And when you stand in the presence of God. And you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Do not. Do not expect the love of God. Please expect the wrath of God. And I said a nice please. To be polite. To warm you of this nice cold day. That Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. And there is a hell and there is a death upon the cross. Otherwise... You're involved in a cult. You do not have the love of God. And you'll feel the flames of hell with your belief. Wicked people go to hell and good people go to hell. Revelation 20, the books were open, the works were judged. How does a man go to hell? By God not loving him. Now please. Don't think of the panty waist message you're going to get. And you got from your preacher Sunday mornings. God does not love everybody. <laughs> Let me say that again. God does not love everybody. When you have rejected his son, when Christ has suffered for a miss, and Jesus died because you do not want to believe on him, there is no love of God. Your fellowship, your standing before God today, is on the merit of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, minus Mary. If you are believing on Mary, you are totally lost and totally unloved by God because God never set Mary as an example, as a standard, as a merit for salvation. Oh, he's preaching on my Mary. I'll preach on everything. I'll preach on anybody against everybody that goes against Jesus Christ as the way, as the truth, as the life that is the only access to God the Father. Because Jesus, according to John 14, 6, is the way, is the truth, is the life. And there is no other way to God the Father except by Jesus Christ. That's it. You're so narrow-minded as a preacher. Whoa! No, the Bible has set the standard. The Bible has set the way. The Bible sets the truth. And the God of the Bible says it's Jesus Christ only. And the Apostle Paul tells us to be forewarned because Satan has his Jesus, Satan has his gospel, Satan has his spirit. Where Paul says there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, there is another spirit. And those Jesuses, those gospels, those spirits will not get the love of God in your life. Only by the biblical Jesus, the Bible, the Jesus that is God, the God that is Jesus can save your soul and retain that love. You come up to God with any other name. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. You come
come to God with any name but the holy biblical Jesus, you are without love. You are without merit. There is none that doeth good. But there's only one way, there's only one truth, and there's only one lie. That is Jesus Christ. That's it. He said, preaching, you're narrow-minded. I say God is narrow-minded because God said there's one way, there's one truth, there's one life. And that my love, God speaking, is shed abroad at Calvary and it stops there. When you reject Jesus Christ. Now, if you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you to be saved God's way of salvation... Then the love of God comes back to you. God only loves you through Jesus Christ, and that's it. Listen, don't expect God to be happy with your Easter Estar eggs tomorrow, or whatever day that is. Don't expect God to be pleased when you have brought in heathen practices into your church as Santa Claus, as secret women, secret this, secret all that, and bunnies, and all other kinds of crap. That's not Jesus. Jesus of the Bible was born of the Jews. He was born of the tribe of Judah. He will sit upon the, the throne of David. He is God manifested in the flesh. 100% God, 100% man. He suffered and died that you might have eternal life. That is the only way to please God. That's the only way to get the love of God. That's it. For God so loved the world. There's the love. There's God is love. That he gave. The love of God is, is charity. It's giving. His only begotten son. So the giving. The love of God is His only begotten Son, Jesus. That the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But the gift of God, God so loved the world that He gave, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So John 3, 16, God gave His beloved Son. Acts 6, 23, the gift is Jesus Christ. The Son is Jesus, and the gift is Jesus, and Jesus is the gift, and the only way to get that love of God. Let me say it like this. Let me bring you a, a type. Take a person that you love dearly. Wife, mother, father, child, whoever you love the dearest, the best, the greatest, whoever that is. And what they do is they have pushed someone out in front of a bus and they died in the attempt of saving someone else. They were flattened by the bus and died. And the person that was pushed out of the way looked at your dear loved one and said, on you. That was stupid for you to do that. There could have been other ways I could have been saved from that bus. You're not going to have a love for that person if they spit and profane and do evil to the person that saved them. Your loved dear one. So you have some gall to think that God's going to love you after all the suffering of Christ. And the Bible speaks about Jesus being so marred that you couldn't even recognize what he was. And you have the gall to think that if you reject Jesus Christ that God loves you. You're wicked and profane in the preacher that preaches that also. The man 
saying that says, come to me and I'll relieve you of your sins is wicked. The man that says, come and we'll put you in water and that will save your soul, that's wicked. The man that says, give us whatever you have and we'll take away your sins, that man is wicked. Because they're not preaching, they're not teaching the cross of Jesus Christ. I said the cross of Jesus Christ. Not the stake, the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not die, oh, it's some kind of mystical Michael kind of thing. No, Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the biblical Jesus. He never was and will ever be Michael. He's Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Don't ask me how to spell Michael. I probably spell Michelle. But how do you know the difference between Jesus and Michael? One starts with a J, the other starts with an M. Hey! All right, isn't that great? And that biblical Jesus is the only way for you to get to heaven. To put your faith and trust on the finished work of Jesus Christ, that will retain the love of God in your life. And not only the love of God, but Love, joy, peace. The love of God is set forth by Jesus Christ. There is no other means. There is no other way. There is no other truth. But Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because I have believed on Jesus Christ as my Savior. I was once Roman Catholic, and I was lost. April 21st, 1987, I gave up the Roman Catholic Church for Jesus. And these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I will skip past purgatory and go right to heaven. God loves me, not without Jesus Christ. Isn't that a joke? Cultural services in Daytona Beach, that's a joke. The city that will welcome you, get undressed, and, and drink beer and all that, and that's cultural services. That's wickedness. Just as much wickedness as the city of angels with all the prostitution and the filth coming out of that place. You got the wrong aspect of God in your lives. God is holy. Be holy. For I am holy, God says. You're anything but holy. You're anything but right. And your churches make God sick. Revelation chapter 3. You're not in good standing with God. Without Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus. There is no 1-800 number. There is no www preacher's name. It is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What church do you belong to? I belong to the church that's Calvary. Right there with the hill, with the cross, with the dying Savior. I came to that cross. I knelt down. I gave Jesus all my sins. I put my faith upon Jesus. And I came out of that empty tomb as a Christian. There is no other way but Jesus, the biblical Jesus, the Jesus that is God, the God that is Jesus, Acts 28, Acts 20, 28, that blood is God's blood, that blood of Jesus Christ is God's blood, is God. 
suffered and died on a cross. Don't make me be mistaken. He suffered and died on a cross. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the Jesus to get the love of God back. That's Jesus. That's the story and the mission of Jesus. Jesus wants you to be saved. He's God. God's long-suffering. God says, I'm not willing that any should perish. God wants you to step out and believe on his son, and then he'll love you. You know how much God will love you upon his son? Do you realize when you become saved upon Jesus that you become a child of God? My earthly dad is named Frank. Okay? I take on his name Hayward. But because of Jesus Christ, I have been adopted by God and I take the name of Jesus Christian. The love of God upon Jesus Christ, your soul and your salvation rests upon. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God will adopt you into his family. And all the love that he will share upon you as one of his children. You see, Father and God is just thrown out there like spaghetti. Oh, Father, Heavenly Father, oh, Father, let us pray to the Father. But the Almighty God, the Father of all creation that made us, says, if you believe on my Son, Jesus Christ, you are now part of my family. You become a child of me, and God is your Father. And when Satan and the world comes against you, Father... I can't do nothing. Help. Okay, son. Step out of sight. Satan. God's my father. That's all I'm going to say. Worldly people. God's my father. That's all I got to say. Atheist. God's my father. Even though you don't believe in him, he's my father. Prepare to meet thy God. Now, I'm prepared to meet God through and by Jesus Christ. Now, what am I going to say when I die and meet God? And just typology here, this illustration. I appear before God and God says, okay, why do I let you into my heaven? Father, I am your son by Jesus Christ and his finished work that I am unrighteous. I cannot do anything good. And by the merit and by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, am I saved? Am I put into your family? Well done. Come unto. Notice I, didn't re I did not mention religion. I did not mention charity. I didn't go up to God and say, God, look at me. Look who I am. <laughs> and yet some of you blasphemous Baptists and Christians and Catholics and whatever you are, you think that you're just going to walk up to God, high five him, my father, what's going on? Aren't you happy I'm here? You are unloved. You have been spooked. Because God is a holy God. There are no religions in heaven. They're in hell. Religions are man-made and yet Jesus Christ is God approved. Religion before God gets cast out into the lake of fire. Jesus Christ before God gets you in. And do you know a biblical fact? How, I can't think of the word. I'm wordless. How abound is the finished work of Jesus? How much the death according to the scriptures of Jesus? 
Is it of vital importance for our soul? What is this importance that you come here and preach every Saturday? What is the means of this Jesus that you preach? I hope we all know the story of Jesus being nailed to that cross. If I don't, shame on your church and your school. But if you don't know the story of Jesus in the, in the cross, there are two ladies here that would be happy to tell you. Say, listen, I just want to hear about this Jesus in the cross. Step up, they'll tell you. They got a nice voice than I have. They would love to show you, even with an open Bible, the story of Jesus. But Jesus was nailed to that cross by his hands and by his feet. And what is so God-honoring of that story that we preach? Thomas not only said, my Lord, my God. But Thomas was told to take his fingers and his fists and put them in the holes of Jesus. People, the holes are still there. The sufferings of Christ, the marks, are still there in Jesus. For all eternity, those marks upon Jesus for your soul are there and you think you're going to walk up to God being a Catholic. How dare you? How dare you bring your credentials to God and God, look how great I am. And when God, Jesus Christ, puts his hands out and you see the Mars in his hands, that's how good Jesus is. I didn't say was, I said is. You've got to watch your words. Because John 3.16 says love, past tense. You realize the fact is that the Bible says a Christian gets a new body and yet for all eternity we're going to see the holes in his hands that we have not yet seen. And imagine those hands telling you at the great white throne judgment as he takes his hand and spreads it out and points to the lake of fire. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And you see the nail holes pointing to the lake of fire. You know what I say to you and your works? Go to hell. I pay the price. See my hands? That's Jesus. And when Jesus tells you to go to hell, there's no fighting, there's no laughing. But you do not need to hear Jesus tell you to go to hell. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The Bible says he's not here. He is risen. We're waiting for the blessed hope, the coming of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes, or if I die and be absent from this body and present with the Lord, there's going to be no fear. There's going to be anxiety. There he is. Many of you have been waiting for Mary. You won't find her. Many of you wait for Allah. He ain't a God. He ain't the God. Some of you are waiting for a Pope. He's dead in the ground still. The, the tomb of my Savior, Jesus Christ, is empty. He is not here. He is risen. Doesn't that tell you something? I'm waiting for the Easter Bunny. Well, you ate all your life. There is none. Sorry. There is no Easter Bunny. Got it from a preacher with the Bible. Have a good day. You have heard from a Bible-believing Christian preacher with the Bible, there is no Easter Bunny. Get your children looking for Jesus, not the Easter Bunny. 
had them seeking Jesus Christ, God, not an Easter bunny. Oh, I get better at Christmas. It's a fruit day. I need to say that one more. There is no Easter bunny. Jesus is coming. Chocolate will make you get fat. And then years later, you complain why your wife is fat because you're giving her all this chocolate over the years. There is no Easter Bunny. I like that. Because there's Jesus. And Jesus suffered and died on that cross. And shame on your church if they celebrate Istar. Look that one up. I S H T A R. I may have blew that. I may have blew that. But Estar sounds like Easter. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I gotta tell you something. Yes. I learned something last week from you. I never thought of it. It's so crazy how some things are so simple. Like they said that the last temple. It's scripture. He's got a name. We all know that. Yep. But you were absolutely right. When you get up there, he's not gonna know us. I know he ain't gonna know the sinners. Even the I never thought of that. Even the Christians get a new name. Yeah, more like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but that's amazing. I thought there, about that after I left. There is no names in hell. Ah, that's why he said that. So, that judgment is it. That and get people, away from me. I don't know you. And then people say, oh, I'm going to party with my friends. Well, you're not going to know who they are. Yeah. You're not going to know who they are. Oh, fuck, you're going to be mad in hell each other. Yeah. Excuse my language, but you're going to be mad in hell each other. Yeah. Okay. Have Everyone a good day now. Pass it on to you. <laughs> it is Jesus Christ that's the way, that's the truth, that is the life. There is no nothing else. There is no other way. There is no religion in the eyes of God. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God approved. That's it. I would love, we've been here four or five years. I would love to someone take these videos and count how many times I mentioned Jesus. And that the Bible says there is not, let me, let me open that because I misquote this verse and I, I apologize, God. Yeah, I'm a sinner. Acts 4.12, let, let me turn there. Let me get out of the Bible's mouth. Let me get out of Jesus' mouth. Uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. What did I say Acts 4.12? Acts chapter 4.12, as I turn there. 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. I've been doing that verse injustice. I apologize to God. For there's no other name. Mary can't do it. Buddha can't do it. Your pastor can't do it. You cannot do it. Your mama cannot do it. Any saint cannot do it. Any idol cannot do it. Any G-O-D-S cannot do it. There is only one name. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. No other name under heaven. Well, it can't be Santa Claus because there is no Santa Claus. Ooh, double bang today. Got to take the red and the blue pill. And it cannot be the Easter Bunny because the Easter Bunny, there is no Easter Bunny. Now I got to take the yellow pill. Boy, he's just really making me upset today preaching the gospel about Jesus and Jesus alone because you're not going to hear this in your church. And it's sure not in Istar. And the only title for your salvation is Lord God Almighty. And that title is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And whosoever was not found written in the last book of life was cast off into the lake of fire. I am 
preaching to whosoever, and that's you. Yeah, you. My spiritual finger is pointing at you, whosoever. Grandma taught me I was never to point fingers. That's bad. She said that pointing the finger at me. And yet I say the finger of God is being pointed at you when I say whosoever believes shall not perish. That's you. Whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. That's you. If you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not if you believe in anything else. If you believe in anything else or you don't believe on Jesus Christ, you will be the whosoever that's cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. The only way out of hell and the only way to obtain the love of God is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. That's it. That is it. Like that man that came up and said. God will hate you so much when you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. When He puts you into hell, you do not have a name. I have a name written down in glory in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Bible even says a new name. A brand new name given by God because I love His Son. based upon all about the Son. April 21st, 1987, Waterford, Connecticut, in my grandmother's living room, at her coffee pot, at her, at her coffee table, by the witness of a man named Joe Caswell, I knelt down and received the love of God and it's never been taken away. God said, stop everything. Someone is calling my name. Someone is calling my son. They are reaching out for salvation. Stop. Bring forth that Lamb's Book of Life and let me put that name in the book. And as that name is written in the book, the Bible says the angels rejoice. For a sinner has turned to Jesus Christ, the angels rejoice. You want to make the angels happy? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture. You want the love of God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want to go to hell? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be safe after you die? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you say, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Remember Acts 4.12, salvation, only one name, no other name. That name is Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ, God hates you. The wrath of God. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And if you're going to say the wrath of God, how can you say, God loves me? God is going to show me his wrath, but he loves me. That's a contradiction in scriptural terms. The only way for God to love you is through the Son, Jesus Christ. That is it. That is it. 